Hi guys, welcome back to Classic Hyper Reviews and the second part of the CTF 950 restoration. So in the meantime, uh, the belts have arrived and to be able to swap those out, we have to remove the transport. And to be able to do that, we have to remove the front plate first. This is fairly easy done. I think it's just three screws on the top of the device and three screws on the bottom of the device. And then we can pull off the front plate. When you remove the front plate, you have to be very careful not to break this white plastic clip that you'd see on top of the transport. It's very easy to break, so keep it away with one of your fingers and then just slide the front off. As the buttons are quite a bit corroded um, and I also want to give this a bit of clean behind the display, taking the opportunity to remove that part as well. And here a little close up of the transport. We have to remove these four screws in the front and two from the bottom to be able to take it out. Okay, so the transport is loose, but there are still plenty of wire straps that needs to be cut and plugs that need to be unplugged to be able to move it around. So the process might be a bit daunting to unplug all these plugs and cutting off all these wire straps. But it actually goes back together um, fairly easily. At that time I thought I can unplug it completely, uh, but then I learned later that actually some wires will actually stay on the device and they are not unpluggable. And here we go. Okay, there's one more we probably need to unplug. If it's unpluggable. Okay, let me verify that. Yeah, it isn't unpluggable, but uh, the Pioneer engine has thought about a solution, and simple enough, you just have to put the deck on the side. That gives you more in, than enough room um, to work without, with it without having to unsolder the remaining wire. Now it's time to uh, disassemble the transport. So first we remove the clip because again, we, we just don't want to break it. And I found for this particular deck, it's actually quite easy um, to separate the different layers of the transport from each other and bring them back together. It's quite service friendly and I really enjoyed working on it.
And by the way, what you're seeing in the picture is uh, the motor, which is more in the middle of the deck. That is the capstan motor, and the motor on the right, that is a real motor. So this bit just folds over and you have access to the caps and belts and if you just want to replace the belts then this is how far you have to disassemble it. You can replace them and put it back together. Um, we have two belts because it's a dual caps and deck um, so we will be replacing both of them. Uh, but we'll take this a little bit further of course um, and uh, we further disassemble the deck and give it a little bit more attention. So what I also like to do when I restore a cassette deck like this is to remove the capstans. That makes it a little easier to lubricate and to clean them. And what you have to be careful about is that when you pull them out, that they're on the other side, some small plastic pieces that keep the oil inside. And in this example now, they're just dropping on my rubber mat below and they're not getting very far. You just have to be conscious about to collect them and put them on the side. Or alternatively, you can remove them before from the front, before you pull these out. I took the transport further apart and also had a look at the idler tire and the whole assembly. Um, I found that the, um, the joints were quite stiff and uh, found some old grease, so I decided to give um, the whole assembly a bit of an overhaul uh, to completely take it apart, um, clean everything and re-lubricate it. That was a success. This moves so much easier now. Putting back together the whole assembly and moving to the next part. Okay, so I decided to give every moving part some attention and uh, relubricate it. And I kept all the steps in the video, so I hope it's not getting too boring. And the particular part now, this pulley, um, is part of the mechanism for the idler tire, and this is where the belt will go on to from the real motor. What I'm doing here is cleaning the pickup reels um, with some alcohol. I just want to make sure that the idler tire has a really good drip later when we put it all back together. Just a tiny drip of oil makes sure that every lever moves smoothly.
This is the idle tire assembly that is now going back in place. It was so stiff before we started to work on it and now it moves so easily. So you know installing the belt that goes from the real motor pretty much to the idler tire and controls uh, the movement of these bows pickup rolls. Time for the counter bell to go into place. After doing one of my favorite things, putting back on a C-clip without losing it, I realized I actually missed a spring in this Isla tire assembly. There's another spring on this idler tire assembly and then made it a really fiddly job to get that all back together. But finally, I got everything in place. And some more C-clips so that everything stays in place. Looks pretty good. But of course, by far we are not done yet. There's some more old grease to be scrubbed off and a lot more to be cleaned and relubricated. also took this guy off. It's, it moves up in the mechanism and there are also some rubber bits on it that I wanted to treat and um, of course there was some old grease on it so it deserved some attention and some relubrication. And here is the rubber and uh, roller restorer that I'm using. That's the only product I could find here in Australia to restore some rubber. And that's what I'm putting on the rubber bits on, on this piece. So what's really important is that we're taking care of these um, flat um, steel springs. Um, so under these springs here is a little um, iron ball. It, it works a bit like a ball bearing and uh, the whole uh, mechanism, the whole bridge when it goes up um, is, is moving um, kind of onto these balls. Uh, first I thought uh, maybe just a cleaning with some uh, WD-40 and uh, a toothbrush would be enough, but then I, just, I changed my mind and decided to disassemble it. So if we move these guys, be careful that you don't lose these little tiny balls. And there you can see this little guy. So I cleaned both of them really well, removed any old grease and make them also nice and shiny again. And then put on some new lithium grease and reinstalled them back into the deck. 
Okay guys, so I put everything back together. Locked it in. So let's see if we still have some light. Okay, that's looking good. So I hope we got a bit more action than last time and we can actually use something. Okay. Wow! So we can hear something, it just sounds a bit slow. And I hear noise from the real motor and I think we have to rebuild the real motor. That sucks. But what is really awesome, sound is very clear. I think the heads are fine, so maybe this will be a rather simple restoration actually. If everything is working fine and it's sounding great, I might consider leaving the capacitors in that deck and not replacing them, but I might go through it and, and pull from each and every different capacitance one out and check them if there are any that are um, common to fail. Um, uh, within the production of these decks and if not yeah we just leave it like that but the rebuild of the real motor that will be a major job and it, it's it's really difficult to get that guy open um, okay so let's pull things apart and um, see how we can fix um, that real motor So that's already the end of the second part of the restoration of the CTF 950. So in the next and last video we will be giving the real motor an overhaul. Um, so I'm quite nervous about it because it's the first time that I'm doing something like that. Um, and um, I hope um, that we get the outcome that we are looking for. So don't miss um, the next video and don't forget to subscribe. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.